really look to play hard, especially Bakoor, trying to get that momentum. All the teams right now need those mom need that momentum going into the playoffs. Meanwhile, we also have the third member of our broadcast panel, Miss Sydney Crespo. Sid, how are you? Hi, Javi and Coach Aldo. Of course, I'm still very excited, and I am still joined by your newest courtside reporter, Sam Coloso. Sam, again, we've been together since the first game, manning the sidelines, interviewing coaches. But Sam, what are you most excited about? You know, being part of the MPBL now. Well, just being next to you is already such a privilege, and the fact that I'll be covering games soon is what I'm excited for. Also, na abangan ko talaga ngayon ang ating main game for today. So we'll see what happens. Ayan, so good luck sa'yo and I'm sure na mag -e enjoy ka. Ang saya na we have a new courtside reporter. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Sid. And once again, welcome to the MPBL, Sam Coloso. Let's look at the team standings uh, para sa ating uh, MPBL. Beginning with the South Division where Bacoor is at number 7 right now. Two games above Imus Bandera. Again, Bacoor really needs this win if they want to distance themselves from Imus and have a chance to chase Rizal. But at the moment, they just need to separate themselves from Imus. And Bakor looking comfortably to enter the postseason, but definitely they want wins going into the playoffs as they have lost their last two games. You know, I let Tokaloka 10th spot here in the Northern Division, but they still have the inside track of knocking out Manila for that 8th spot. And Kaloka is a, basically a must win from here on out, and they need to pray that. Manila or Marikina either drops games, but they can do their part by securing this win first for today. Talocan on a four-game losing skid. Let's talk about their last game that was against the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards. A big 103-86 to decision by Nueva Ecija in that game. Uh, just another stamp of masterclass from Nueva Ecija. Points in the paint, 70 compared to the 50 of Talocan. Fast break points. Close, 26 for Nueva and 21 for Caloca. And 33 out of 80 for 41.3% field goals. 47.1 for Nueva Ecija. And, I mean, field goals weren't that bad, but it's just against the loaded Nueva Ecija squad where you can't play anything but an A game against them. Oh, despite the paltry showing from Caloca in that game, one guy did step up para sa kanila. At ito ay ang bagong gupit na si James Martinez. James had 21 points in that game, 50% from the field, well above his average of 11.6. I don't know, but I think I prefer the old haircut better. <laughs> but again, look for James to step up again if they really want to get a chance to be able to get into the playoffs. Look for another big performance from James today. Well, so far, that haircut uh, is a malis pa in terms of getting wins for his team, but he definitely has his offensive performance going. So let's see if he can duplicate that and end up with a victory para sa Kalookan. Dako naman tayo sa kabila. Bakoor lost a uh, 69-58. It's Bacolod Bingo Plus. That was uh, last September 17. So rebounds for Bacolod, 50 to the 42 of Bacoor. And second chance point, 16, of, 16 for Bacolod and 10 for Bacoor. But the field goal story, 23, 29.3% for Bacoor and 35.8% for Bacolod, it'll be hard to win with free throw with shooting percentages like that. That game happened in General Santos City, and uh, Coach uh, uh, Willie General Lau definitely had time to prepare his team for this game. Key player for the strikers is that guy on your screens, Mark Montuano. 13.2 points per game, ended up with a double double in their last match 11 and 11 plus two blocks. Almost averaging a double double. Look for Mark to be to put a stamp on this game if they want to have that momentum going into the postseason. So let's see if which team will come out of their losing slap in today's game. Will it be Baku or will it be Kalookan? Let's turn you over to our Coliseum announcer for our player introductions. It's another night full of non-stop basketball action here at the Strike Gym. Welcome for tonight's main game, Kalookan versus your Bacoor City. This is the OK Bet, Manny Pacquiao's MPBL fourth season, presented by Extreme. Here are the starters, beginning with the Kalookan Excellence Victory Liner. 
Starting at center, number 22, Rafi Octobre. At guard, number 24, Damian Lasco. Starting at small forward, number 8, Jaggi Laude. Power forward, number 26, Real Serpantes. And at one guard, number 3, Achi Inigo. The head coach for Caloacan Excellence Victory Liner is Ronnie Tujillo. Assistant coaches, Carl Lanusa, Peter Santamaria, and Hector Serrano. For your Bacor City Strikers! Starting at small forward number 14, JR Gully! At center number 6, Lester Reyes! Starting at point guard number 12, Eric Acuna! Also at guard number 21, RJ Ramirez. And at power forward number 10, Mark Montuano. The head coach for Bacor City Strikers is Willie Generalau. Assistant coaches Aldrin Morante, Marlo Corpin, Marlo Aquino, Alan Patrimono, June Portigalidad, and Peter Segundo. Team manager and go team owner is Mr. Jen. Starters for this game, Achi Inigo, Damien Lasco in the backcourt. Octubre is the man in the middle, Joggy Laude in real Cervantes. Para kay Coach Toto Duhilio, para kay Coach Willie Generalau. It's Ramirez Acuna, Reyes Montuano, and J.R. Galit. Those are our primary protagonists for our main game between the home team, the Bacoor City Strikers, and the Caloocan City Excellence Victory Liner. The strikers win the opening tip. Lester Reyes is back in harness after missing some games because of a hamstring injury. Ramirez gets a screen from Reyes. Lester, the stretch, doesn't finish. Montuano saves possession for Bacor, gets it back. Jumper is pure for Mark Montuano. Good sign early on, getting offensive rebounds and converting on that two-point perimeter jump shot. Oh, and Joggy Laude wasn't really too sure what he was going to do with the basketball on that occasion. Tried to get it to Real Cervantes, however, possession will stay with him. Octubre receives the pass. Inigo, two-man game with Cervantes. Leaves it for Octubre. And Rafi Octubre gets his team on the board here. Oh, good aggressive attack. Smart pass. Saw the open man for a better percentage shot. Two all with nine minutes left to play in the first quarter. Acuna, bounce pass. Montuano, pass intended for Ramirez. But he was not in the area. 2-2 two -two is the count. The referees for this game, Cruci from Monsanjago Jr. Referee 1 is Reynaldo Gabriel. Referee 2, Michael Kinai. And the fourth man on the sidelines is Hiram Scott. Cervantes, quick spin to the baseline. Try to leave it for Octubre. Turnover, Caloocan. Tough pass. Ramirez kicks it back out. Acuna, rare three. On the way, in down for Eric Acuna. Good pass there, seeing that Inigo was under the pick. He was too open to pass up that shot. Three points for him. Eric Acuna played 20 minutes against Bacolo in their last game, but ended up that game scoreless. Montuano couldn't finish. On the other side, Lasco. Drop pass, Cervantes, the score. Five to four now is the count. More than two minutes into the first period. Ramirez gets the handoff. Reyes, three-pointer. In and out. Octubre with the rebound. Good open look. Just rattled in and out.
Cervantes trying to get it to Laude on the low block. That pass will sail out of bounds. Turnover once again para sa Kalokan. Unforced error there. And as we see this three-point shot, Inigo under the pick makes them pay. And Cervantes with a finish on that play. Back here, Bacor, got it from the right flank. Jumper is short, gets his own miss. Acuna, cross court, Ramirez from the left corner, short as well. Loose ball foul. Esther Reyes will acknowledge. Let's listen in to uh, Siti Crespo for her first report. Pride and trust. Yan ang uh, battle cry ng Bacor strikers tonight as they attempt to bounce back from their painful losses. Consistency is something that they're still trying to work on. Pero before that, sabi ni Coach Willie, kailangan muna nilang pagkatiwalaan ng isa't isa. And when they trust each other, dyan na nga daw lalabas ang kanilang confidence. They need to work on these intangibles dahil na rin gusto na raw nilang bumawi para sa kanilang home crowd. Back to you guys. Thank you for that report, Sid. Pride and trust, definitely one of the two things that they need to emphasize in this game. And so far, so good as they lead Kalookan 7-4 in the early goings of our game. Oh, good trust there, passing to the leading man for that two points. Let's see if they can play good defense this time. October, 9 to work with on the shot clock. Jumper is good, Rafi Octubre. Isolated, no problem against Lester Reyes. Fourth point in the ball game of that isolation jump shot. Ramirez picks up his dribble. They swing it, Acuna passes up on the three. Kick out intended for Ramirez, Garrett ends up with it. Quickly the other way, Lasco free lane to the home. Good pass, good lead pass. Knew where he was going to be, passed it in front. Easy two-point layup for the fast break conversion. Talokan now in the driver's seat, 8-7. to seven. Galin. Acuna now trying to snake his way. Bad pass. Montuano tried to save it. That's going to be a turnover against Bacor. A little too much passing on the side of Bacor. A lot of jump passing being shown. Here's the move here by October, the crossover, the spin, and the fall away. Now the pass leading to a score by Damien Lasco. Inigo, two-man game with October. Hooks it to Lasco. Couldn't get another bucket. Cervantes trying to muscle his way inside. No call. Gets his own miss. No basket again. Two on two break here. Got it. Will take it by himself and he will finish. Good finish there, good athletic finish there. Octubre gets his own miss. That jumper short. Oh, foul. Going to be called against the strikers here. That foul is going to go against Takunya. First team foul here for Bacor's captain. Is the miss by October? The foul happened before that play. Inigo will inbound from the baseline. 14 seconds on the shot clock here for the excellence. Ball tap. That will stay with Kalookan. Low scoring affair we're having so far. Meanwhile, we bring you this epic move of the game in partnership with OK Bet. On the win, Salvador J.R. Gallin. Getting the finish with the offhand. Laude gets the screen from Cervantes. Four remaining on the shot clock. Three. Lasco. Three pointer. Doesn't work. Cervantes, another offensive rebound. And the finish of the glass for the former refugee, Tamarao. Lots of second chance points for Kalogan right now. I think two offensive rebounds in that possession alone. Got it now, up top. Jumper, still short. Coloca now stepping into their offense. 
Laude liking this matchup against Moralde. Leaves it for Octubre. And another two points for the big man. Good cut. And good recognition by Laude. Shoveling the pass to uh, cutting Octubre for an easy two-pointer for his sixth basket. Sixth point of the game. Moralde picks up his dribble. Montuano, they give it back to Dave. Moralde for three. That uh, rims out. Caloacan once again will slow things up here. Inigo is at the controls. Double screen on top. They give the stagger to Lasco. Cervantes pops out. Three-pointer is good. Great play ran there by Caloacan. It was this pass by Achi Inigo. Lasco received it off the screen. And the kick out for Cervantes for the three-pointer, which extends the lead for the excellence right now by 6, 15 to 9 as we head into this timeout. up on your screens between these two squads, Kalookan and Bakor. Kalookan holding a slight advantage in terms of points scored per game, but they give up more points from their opponents. 83.3 compared to just 73.6 para sa Bakor City Strikers. Bakor, they also have a plus 3 advantage in the rebounding department. 49.5 against 46.1 bench points. Halos pareho yan as well as the assists. On your screens, Coach Willie Generalao, together with Coach Aldrin Morante and Coach Toto Johilio, the man on the sidelines for Caloacan. Acuna to the popping Mark Pangilinan. First attempt is good for the sharp shooter out of Bacor. Crowd goes wild after that three point shot. Good play coming off the other end of the screen, opening up himself for that open three point look. Pangilinan has struggled from three-point country in their past few games. But teams definitely should still be wary of his prowess from the outside as he proves once again why he was, is one of the best shooters in the MPBL with that three-point shot. Montuano getting mixed up on that play. Here's that Pass by Acuna, fake by Montuano, and the foul by Chucky Lauder. Uh, just a little, uh, no easy basket foul right there. Just good physical basketball, no ill intent whatsoever. Just bit on the fake. Mark Montuano. Averaging 11 points per game, sorry, 13.2 points per game and 9.1 rebounds. He had 11 points in their last game to go with 11 rebounds. The leading scorer for the Bacor City Strikers, 63.3% from the free throw area this season. Couple of substitutions here para sa Kalokan. Joseph Terzo, Tweety Santos, as well as Fabro will check in para kay Coach Toto Dujilio in lieu of Laude, Inigo, and Octubre. They join Martinez and Edwin Asoro on the floor. Martinez, specialty of the house on the way. Yes, sir. James Martinez for three. That play started from the post to the corner to the wing, back to the opposite wing for that open three. Good ball rotation by Kalokan on that possession. James Martinez is averaging only 20% from downtown this season, but we all know he is much more capable of shots from the outside. Here he is now. They get a stop. Terzo gets it back. Martinez, step back three. 
short this time. Tries to track down the loose ball. Moralde ends up with it. Pangilina, and he will not be shy. Short as well. Terso, Calocan doesn't have the numbers. They'll set things up. Santos, three pointer. Para kay Jomar Santos. Confidence stroke there. Coming from the inside, coming out, receiving the ball. No second thoughts. Let it fly, and it's good for three. Third three pointer of the game para sa Calocan. The first para kay Jomar Santos. Pangilinan gets the handoff. Acuna cross court to Moralde. And they run out of time. 24 second shot clock violation. Charged here to Bacor. Good defense there on Caloca. And active hands. Tapping the ball. Even though they didn't force a turnover, they gave up. They let them give up a shot clock violation. A three point shot of James Martinez is brought to you by Extreme One Stop Shop Appliances as well as that trifecta from Jomar Santos. A foul called against Pangilinan. That's team foul number three against the Strikers. 36.8 seconds remaining in the first period. Pangilinan, a lot of contact on Martinez. James kicks it out. Asoro puts the ball on the deck. Blocked by Destacamento. Running the floor, Bacoor, defense to offense. Let's see if Bacoor can come up with something in the last 15 seconds of this first quarter. Alonso has checked into the game along with Ian Melencio and that man, King Destacamento. Chad gets it at the post, one-hander works. Asoro the heave, good line, but just too strong. Too much muscle on the Hail Mary. However, his team with a good lead here to win the first 10 minutes of action. Some highlights from the first period. Montuano was able to start festivities with a shot from the perimeter. However, Rafi Octubre able to get good shots off, including that one. He had six points in the quarter, getting the better of that matchup against Lester Reyes. JR Gallet able to contribute for the strikers but his team down at this point everybody chipping in for Kalohan. game started pretty slow for both teams but Kalohan was able to pull away now the score is 21 15 at the end of the first quarter Crowd here at the Bacoor City Strike Gymnasium. Good sized crowd supporting their home team, the Bacoor City Strikers, as they try to end their two game losing skid against another team who is trying to end their losing streak. Itong Kalookan Excellence. Four games. Ang sunod sunod na pagkatalo. Ito ng mga bata ni Coach Toto Diohilio. Second quarter, just about underway here. This is the third game of your Thursday triple header. Dito sa Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League, ang liga ng bawat Pilipino. Abby Polanya together with Coach Aldo Panlilio, and you have Sidney Crespo and Sam Coloso at courtside. Asoro tries to get a pass inside to Fabro, and another foul is called against Mark Pangilinan. That's going to be foul number two against him. Yeah, 
is that play. A hit by Pangilinan on the pass upon receipt nito ni Del Fabro. Little zone here for Bacor. Fabro tries to get one up. Alonso hands it off to Moralde. Pangilinan being chased by Martinez. That three-pointer is off. Well, that three-point reminded me of uh, Kyle Korver right there. Like, just get the ball off a curl and let it fly. Unfortunately, he didn't go in, but it's nice to see the confidence there from your shooter. Mark Pangilinan averaging 33.6% from three-point country this season. Let's turn you over to Sidney Crespo. The Caloacan excellence are faced with several adversities due to a losing streak, number of injuries, and a tough schedule ahead. So it is very important that the management and coaching staff to take care of the load management of their team. With that, they try to get as much rest as possible and maximize the lineup that they have. Coach Ronnie definitely needs to have the next man up. Azra Flores is nursing a spasm right now and hopefully Jomar Santos who's back after a blue can help contribute to this loss. Back to you guys. Thank you for that report, Sid. So no JR Flores para dito sa Caloacan Excellence but they don't really seem to be missing his presence in this game as Octubre has definitely stood up para sa kanyang kupunan as six points getting the starting nod getting kay Coach Toto Johilio. Meanwhile, James Martinez gets the bounce on that layup to Use, extend their lead to five points. Using the speed right there, so a bigger man on him just blew by for that finish. Moralde gets the pass. Three-pointer as well for Dave Moralde. Two straight three-pointers para sa Bacor. Santos will try to answer back. That was way off. Pangilinan, will he get two straight? It's right there by Mark Pangilinan. He was three out of seven in that game against Bacol at Bingo Plus. Oh, that's going to be an offensive foul against John Mar Santos. Read that well. Dave Moralde knew he was going to bump him. Sold it a little bit. Saw it there. Oh! Uh, premier acting job Galing dito kay Dave Moralde Although there was an extension Of that shoulder Galing dito kay Jomar Santos And he will be met with a warning For a sportsman-like behavior It's part of the game Saying it was a flop but Again, basketball is a game of Mental toughness You have to think about what you're gonna do next How to get under your opponent's skin And that's what he did right there Backcourt pressure defense here for Caloacan. Oh, offensive foul against Chad Alonso. A defense paying dividends on that occasion para sa Caloacan. Good play on the passing lane by Laude. That last pass was telegraphed. Was pushed in the air and was called a uh, was called for a foul there. Well, when you're going up against Pressure defense in the backcourt. You never want to be stuck on that sideline. Trapping zone. That's where they, yes, that's where they want you to be. And if you bring yourself there, you're just asking for trouble. Edsel Magisha debuts in this game. Gets a first touch. Moralde forces the issue. Defense all over that shot. Chad Alonso dribbles that one off his foot. That's going to be a turnover against the strikers. Turnover number four for Bacor City in this game. And Coach Toto De Hilio will take this opportunity to burn a timeout as his team up by just two points, 23 to 21.
looking at the schedule in the next three games para dito sa Caloa Connections Victory Liner they have the Saragani Marlins on the 26 three days after the Batanga City Embassy Chill and Montilupa on October the 4th who just got out of a tight matchup against the Batanga City Embassy Chill almost ending up with a victory in that one in their matchup in Zamboanga City itong Caloocan including this game five games remaining on their schedule so those next three matches very crucial in their chase for that eight spot in the northern division coach Toto Dujilio trying to rally his troops to get wins one game at a time that's how it should be right now this is the time where you look back at those games where you should have won now you're just hoping that other teams lose and you can sustain a winning streak coming to the end of the season. Justin Padua is into the game para sa Caloacan. Cervantes wants it against Alonso. Step back jumper. Doesn't work. Moralde with the board. Good look there. Created space. Just couldn't get the shot to fall for Cervantes. Magisa. Slight double from Martinez. Alonso on the flash. Good hands by Rail. Oh, great pass. James Martinez with the finish. It, that soft forward pass by Cervantes. Right in the good spot of Martinez. Melencho gets that jumper to go and gets the foul against Justin Padua. Both teams trading baskets in the past couple of possessions. And I think uh, I think we can also put this guy in the category of uh, scoring, scorers, professional scorers. Ian Melencio, hometown hero here in Cavite. Very, very famous. Pag sinabi mong mga sikat na players sa Cavite, Ian Melencio, definitely one of them. That free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances, ang subukan to play appliance brand ng Pilipinas. He converts on the end one opportunity there. I think uh, Melesha before, his game reminds me of uh, Terrence Romeo as the handle, as the shot. And I think that's what uh, made him famous, his game for his handle, how he finishes in the basket. Or oh, just couldn't play defense there. That's actually a pretty uh, good comparison because Terrence Romeo is also from Cavite. Oh, and they both have, well, Terrence used to have long hair, but as you can see, he almost had that two-point shot. Well, let's see if that comparison will spark a great offensive game. Galing dito kay Ian Melencio. Scored his first three points in the previous sequence para sa Bacoor. Jan Hamon, first appearance in this game. One of the three mid-season additions para sa strikers. Caloacan is on the run again. Laude swatted away by Moralde. Good defense there. Not giving up on the play. Now let's see if they can convert on the other end. Magisa couldn't get the roll. Hamon all alone for three. Shot is long. Terso tracks the rebound. Oh, slowing it down right now. Game's a bit too quick for both squads. Both squads need to set something up on offense. There, so a little Carson shake kicks it out. Martinez gets the screen from Cervantes. Terso, three on the way, doesn't get the bounce. Moralde will step into the offense for Bagor. They're trying to get Magisa in the post. Moralde decides to drive, and he will be fouled on the way up. Good aggressive drive there by Moralde. Getting hit on the wrist. Na napapansin ko, lahat yata nung player sa game na ito, ang lalaki ng kamay. Talagang hawak na hawak nila yung mga bola pag dumadrive sila. Talagang dakot na dakot eh, no? More than any other game we had today. Lahat sila dakot na dakot yung bola eh. Sana all. Sana all. Sana all talaga. Pag ganyan ka laki kamay mo at meron ka ng vertical jump, sobrang dali na lang dumakdak yes, eh. Yes, no? yes. Kasi pag di mo kaya i-grip yung bola, 
kailangan medyo makaf mo pa yung bola sa wrist. That's right. Eh, that requires uh, ex some extra inches. October makes his way back into this game. Kaloocan is up by 2, 27 to 25, more than midway into the second quarter. Terso all alone for three. Could it convert? Ball is tapped into the hands of Ian Milencio. Pull up. A jumper long. Tap ends up with Ian. Hamon, another try. Still doesn't go. Two open looks for Hamon right there. Just couldn't convert. They just keep shooting, it'll fall. John Hamon before strutting his wares for Bahor in this season. Played in the PBA 3x3 circuit. But no stranger to the MPBL as he was one of the top gunners for the Pasay Voyagers in seasons past. Ring ng parehong kupunan dito para may takip. Oh my. Oh, Cervantes almost got the steal there. But our referee thinking otherwise and he will be called for, for a personal. Well, let's see it right here. I don't know about you, that looked to be all about to me. You know, as a, I'm sure you've also experienced that, when the referee that calls the foul is behind the play, and you think, nasa while the referee in front didn't blow the whistle. So it must be frustrating when you're trying to play good, honest defense. Magisado capitalizes on the opportunity, making the first free throw. Edsel Magisa averaging 6.4 points per game in over 12 minutes this season para kay Coach Willie Hineralao. Split at the line, only 50.8% from the charity stripe this season. Ito si Edsel Magisa. A 50-50 ball, it ends up on the side of the blue shirts. Sideline inbound now. Magisa doubled. They swing it to the other side. Hamon, baseline drive. Another foul against Real Cervantes. This time not settling for the three, seeing the threes aren't falling for him. Decided to drive into the basket. Now he can get his touch from the free throw line. John Hamon only averaging a shade under six points per game this season. Has only played nine games so far. Para dito sa Bacor, City Strikers. That's the first one to go. John Hamon is 77.8% from the free throw line this season. One of the top free throw shooters para dito sa Bacor. Oh, this scoring, this quarter has really slowed down. 27 all with 3.25 to go. Bacoor is at 11 points this period while Kaloocan only could muster 6. Laude trying to extricate from the defense. Inigo, oh, Octubre misses a gimme. Oh, rush that shot was a bit too open. Frustration ridden all over the face of Rafi Octubre on that one. And to make matters worse, it's going to be a foul against Kalookan, which brings Mark Montuano to the free throw stripe. Makes good on the first. Mark Montuano, six points in the game. Ooh, split at the line as well para kay Mark Montuano. Just like John Amon on the previous trip. A 50% from two guys. October this time from three. Yes, sir! Nine points in the game. 
Pinawi yung foul niya with a three. Hamon, another try. This time he makes it. Got his stroke from the free throw line. Just needed, literally just needed to see one basket go in. Let's see if that can spark him the rest of the game. Laude doesn't use the pick. Magisa, good defensive play there. Timeout here called by Coach Toto Duhilio, but here's the three pointer by Rafi Octubre over the outstretched arms of Edsel Magisa. And there is that one from downtown by John Hamon. Looking at the remaining games para dito sa Bacoor City Strikers, Valenzuela, Pasig City, and Imus. Now Bacoor, we talked about them at pregame. They're number seven in the South Division team standings. But definitely victory is very much welcome on their side to separate them from Imus. Ian Melenso and the rest of the strikers trying to hack out a victory in this one to snap their two-game losing skid lost their last game against the Bacolod Bingo Plus in General Santos City that was last September 17 Laude inbounds to October Last call, back to Rafi. October could it go back to back. That's gonna be a foul. Looks like it's gonna be against Edsel Magisa. I like how the ref really walked up to him, <laughs> blowing the whistle. You, it's you. Talagang sinehen yasan yala talaga ng ganito ay no. Usually they point eh. Pero nilapitan yun nala. Just stood there. Para wala nang away, wala nang kahit ano complaint, just stood there. Foul. Cervantes hands it off to Lasco. Oh, another foul on Magisa. Looked to me that it was Cervantes who bumped Lasco. And it looked to me the same thing. I guess, uh, uh, let's see here on the replay. Ayon, parang sa babae. He tried to bump the leg with the knee. Yeah, a little acting job also by Lasco. Not too much contact there, but just enough to get that whistle blown. Octubre puts the ball on the deck. Jumper on the way. Oh, Ramirez, athletic rebound. Okay, show off then, sir. <laughs> show off then, sir. Can he finish the play, though? 40 seconds left on the shot clock here for Bacor. Hamon off the curl. Doesn't work. Inigo secures possession. Never, never pawn out it. And a top rebound. Well, he oh. saw that here first. For top rebound. Usually top board. Pero ito, tinap yung board. Pag rebound. <laughs> first time yan <laughs> in uh, all of Philippine basketball, I believe. <laughs> But uh, Cervantes getting two points para sa kanilang kupunan. No fishing expedition there. Successful. Trying to get their points from the line. Foul by Rafi Octubre. Second personal laban sa kanya. In Bacoor will troop to their 12th and 13th attempts at the line in this game. Meanwhile, Kaloocan has yet to attempt a single free throw in this match. Oh, wow, that's very surprising. Oh, 
Actually, I think Macor is very happy with the way things are going in terms of free throws shooting in this game para sa kanila because I remember numerous times playing on their home floor that they were on the opposite end of this. Sila naman yung uh, hindi nakaka-attempt from the free throw line. And that's uh, ironic that this is their home court and yes. they practice here and everything. But yung ring sa kanila pa may ayaw. <laughs> One minute and change remaining in our first half. 2-3 zone by Bacor. Laude will try to bust that, but before he could attempt, foul called against the strikers. Oh, another foul given up. Now giving them their first opportunities at the line. Damien Lasco will be our guest on the 15-foot parallel. Damien Lasco, 15.1 points per game this season. Miss on the first try. 67.4% from the charity stripe in this season. It was Damien Lasco. Leading scorer for the Kilogan Excellence. He has blossomed into the go-to guy para kay Coach Toto Duhilio. Once just a role player, but has been given the opportunity and he has taken advantage. Ramirez gets the pick from Montuano. Ball fake, the step, the dribble, and the score by Mark Montuano. Good patience there for his eighth point. Fake the pass. Defense committed, one dribble pull up, two points, giving Bacor a two point lead. First lead for the strikers in a while. Cervantes working against Montuano. And Cervantes gets the better of the matchup. Oh, letting him know you're too small. Good move by Real Cervantes on the baseline. Well, Cervantes already with 11 points in this game and eight rebounds as well. Impressive stat line. We're just in the first half. Here's the score by Montuano. The ball fake, the dribble, the rise, and the score. And here on the opposite end, Cervantes didn't like na nascoran siya dun sa kabila. So he got one of his own. Siyempre, dapat yung bawi mo. Mas maganda sa una. And that was a really nice baseline move. Got two bumps in. Spun off momentum. One, two, reverse. And he let him know, hit him with the, you're too little. <laughs> <laughs> Exciting matchup that we have on our hands here so far. Not disappointing. Itong laban ng Bacoor City Strikers trying to defend home floor against the Caloacan Excellence. Tournament format on your screens. 22 teams in this season playing a single round robin in 21 games. Top 8 teams, of course, will advance to the playoffs in the top 4 teams will be holding home court advantage throughout the postseason. And on for the playoffs, quarterfinals and semifinals and division finals, all best of three with the home court advantage to the top four teams. And for the finals, it will be a best of five. Oh, Kaloakan with a steal here. Laude, the fake, could not finish, gets his own miss, no call. Power dribble, he falls down and battle for the rebound here. Antuano, Melencio, and Laude, each of them trying to jostle for position on the basketball. A uh, little bit of frustration there on Laude's part. Good hands by Inigo. Laude with the open shot. Just couldn't make it. Another chance trying to draw a foul, but frustration right there. Just frustration that he couldn't make it. Bakor now with possession. Come on, thinking of three. Six seconds remaining. Do they realize it? Melencio, Montuano will take it and makes it. Boy, what an end to a pulsating second quarter. Itong Bacor City Strikers found themselves down by six points after the first period. But fought tooth and nail outscoring Kalookan in that second frame 20 to 14 
Last shot by Mark Montuano. Let's look at that again, Aldo. Specialty of the house. He's hit a couple of shots from there. Very comfortable from that range. Right in time to give them a two-point lead going into the half. That 15-foot jumper, especially from the elbow. A thing of beauty coming from Mark Montuano. And uh, that looked to have been good. I think it's a counted basket. Well, I don't think they're announcing it anymore because I think it's a given that it was counted. Oh, wait for the final announcement from our officials. They're still talking about it. Uh, let's look at the highlights of this guy, Mark Pangilinan. Just really solid in that first quarter. Getting two three-pointers. Trying to get out of his slump. He had three three-pointers in their last game against Bacolod. But wanting to do it on a more consistent basis in this game. He is with Sidney Crespo at courtside. Mark, of course, our player at the half. Mark, uh, what an exciting first half ang pinakita nyo para dito sa Bacoor. So now I want to ask you, what's that extra motivation that you have tonight? Bakit ganun kagandang energy na pinakita ninyo? Uh, sinasabi lang sa amin ng coach namin, uh, gawin namin yung best namin. Uh, yung game plan namin, sundin namin uh, para manalo. Alright Mark, I'm gonna let you go kasi alam ko na mag-uusap pa kayo and you have a huddle. Mga kaliga, wag po kayong alis because you have more halftime interviews with Sam Coloso after this. Basketball League, we're at our main game today between Bacaor and Caloocan. And we're at a score of 37 to 35 in favor of Bacaor. At kasama ko ngayon ang team manager ng Bacaor, which is Sir Dennis Abela and ng assistant coach ng Caloocan, Sir Carl Lanusa. Ayun, unahin ko po muna si assistant coach. Coach Carl, alam po natin madami pong wala ngayon sa lineup tonight. Wala si Valen. And ayun, madami pong wala due to injury. Paano niyo po winerk on yung inyong chemistry for tonight's game? Um, we told the players that they have to step up. Uh, Katulad nito, kita naman siya dito, so bench points. So we told our players that they have to step up and point production din. Next is yung free throws. So we have to do a better job din doon. Ang lead ng free throws lang namin, so we have to attack the paint din talaga. And then you stop yung transition. Coach, for sure, madami kayong fans na nanunod tonight. Batiin niyo na po sila. Great. Okay. Saan ko na? Sorry, boss. Eh. Ah, si Congressman Oka Malapitan, si Mayor Along Malapitan, Victory Liner Sports Garage, si Boss Dennis, Boss Felix, si Boss Epay, uh, my mom and the new junior warriors. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. And ngayon, kasama ko din ang team manager, si Sir Dennis Abelia. Ayun po, Sir. How important is it to win tonight dito sa Bacoor? Uh, lahat naman ng game ng uh, Bacoor Strikers, uh, tinitreat namin talaga siyang important. Uh, manalo-matalo talagang lumalaban yung uh, Strikers. 
para sa liga na to. Malamang po pinaghandaan niyo po itong mabuti. Ngayon, batiin niyo na po ang mga taga-bakoor. Uh, maraming salamat. Siyempre, uh, gusto ko rin batiin ang uh, si ating uh, major sponsor, si Richard Gomez, ang Pycure Antioxidant, JCA Sports, 24 Alkaline C, si Shomai King, Uh, Siyempre, binabati mong ama ng Bacor City, si Mayor Strike Revilla, ang kanyang kasawa, si Ma'am Shay, Baby Shaylee, si Boss Rob Revilla. At siyempre, uh, malapit na rin ang birthday ni Senator Bong Revilla, kaya binabati ko siya ng advance. Happy, happy birthday, Sen Bong. At uh, binabati ko rin siyempre ang aking family, uh, si Ezra, Enzo, Adrian, Tete, ng aking asawa. Si Liza at siyempre si Bay at nakutol kong si JR. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat po, Sir Dennis. Now let's check out the top 10 plays of the week. Decides to post up because of that closeout by Victoria. But Rodjay is still able to score on the turnaround. Yes, he does. And as he takes a look at our... Epic move of the game, partnership with OK Bet on the win. Roger Brennan, look at his shoes. Those are Jordan 1s. <laughs> yeah, it's a picture of him. Perfect with the shoes. I can't believe it. Someone's wearing Jordan 1s. Who he was in 2019. Oh, what a spin. Jaymark Pagliari for two. What a tornado right there, Jaymark Pagliari. Leaving the defense in the dust and getting the two points. We bring you the second move of the game in partnership with OK Bet. Going for the win, Jay Park Madani holding that highlight. Great to see him back from that fractured tackle. Going away by Milano. Lucero crossover. That's a beautiful move from the point guard. Look one way, the hesitation, and then the crossover. The great separation. Boy, this kid is just super fast. He goes to the twin. JC, oh, there's that chemistry all the way from birth. Yeah, that connection. That's it. That's it. The connection is it's no baby, but it is. From classic, from classic chemistry. We bring you the second move of the game in partnership with OK Bet. Oh, no win. They just make us speak less from time to time. Stop the vision. Benetso gets it back. Baseline drive. And Benetso, no bounce. Oh, Melencio <laughs> with a putback! Again, Ian Melencio not giving up on the plan that day. Yeah. It was again, RJ Ramirez. Take a look at that putback. Ian Melencio. <laughs> As uh, mentioned by Coach Louis, he didn't see him in the face. That's all that he needed to score the putback. Yeah, he timed it perfectly. Yeah. 15-9, Kaan City with the lead. Caballero, also one of the best passers in the lead. Victoria, oh, that's a tough layup. All the English in the world, he scored his first two points. Notice Victoria, we talked about his confidence. Wow, I mean, the spin on that basketball. Brewing very effective for that basket. Ang gumagawa nung dati, yung pinang yung bumantay sa kanya eh. Si Cyrus Baguio, right? Caballero, oh, tough move, basket and one. Now, this third is the meron pa bang kailangan ng Edgerson drive right there, challenging the defense of the much nicklier J. Mark Impayan, and he will go to the line for a bonus free throw. Again, the gun field, di ba? Hindi siya na ito yung ano eh. Ito yung yung gun field na siya. It's Villas, picks it out. Estrella, two on the shot clock. Oh, good move. Beautiful escape for Antonio Estrella. Not the quickest player, definitely not athletic, but one of the smartest. But that was such a beautiful move that even the fans of San Juan had to give it up to Andoy. Sadio playing in his first season here in the MPBL. Oh, what a move by Santa Maria. Yung ba yung tinatawag sila yung parang Pinoy step ba yan, happy yung sinashow mo na yung bola? Yes, that is the Pinoy step. Yung ba yun, yung ba yun? Baba Santa Maria shows the ball, beats the defender, and finishes on the other side of the basket. It's no hope. Baban with a chance to get the lead. Gabawan, Otto Belugan, 1-2, and 
the layup. This is Banaan brand of basketball. Tight defense, forcing their opponent into tough spots. Take a look at that move. On to the reverse, Jenny Biluga being found by the big guy, Jameen Gabao. And we bring you this epic move of the game in partnership with OK Best on the wing. Amazing skill and control from their line. Looking at the aerial view of the Bohor City Hall complex where the Strike Gymnasium is located, that is the venue for our Thursday triple header Dito sa Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. Kalaokan City Excellence challenging the home team, the Bohor City Strikers. Earlier today we had Makati City Manalaking Pin going up against Pasig where Pasig was able to escape with the victory. And in our second game, the Laguna Cra Asia Heroes losing a big one against the Valenzuela City squad right now. Rail Cervantes and his team down by two points against the Bacoor City Strikers. Yeah, that first half was a very good fourth first half, tough defense. The first quarter scoring was low, so was the second quarter and maybe that will be the theme going into this quarter. Whoever can get the jump might be able to take this game. In the first quarter, it was Kalookan racing to a six-point lead, 21 to 15. Binawian sila ng Bacor in that second frame, 22 to 14. Numbers here from the first half. Uh, points in points inside, 20 for Kalookan and only six for Bacor. Bench points for Bacoor, 22 to Kaolohokan's 12. Blocks, interior defense, 3 for Bacoor and 0 for Kaolohokan. The 2-point field goal percentage, 42% for Kaolohokan and only 7 of 21 for 33% for Bacoor. So Yet, Bacoor is up, only just 2 points. So contrasting uh, points of attack for both teams. The strikers are 5 out of 13 from downtown, pero Kaloka not far behind, 4 out of 13. Leading scorers at the half, Cervantes leads everyone with 11. Octubre has 9. Martinez has 7. And Santos with that lone 3 point shot in the first half, rounding up the top scorers. Para sa Kaloka and sa kabila, it's Montuana, Pangilinan, Moralde, and Jan Hamon. Third quarter now, just about underway between the Bacor City Strikers and the Kalokan Excellence Victory Liner. Coach Willie Hinaralao and his squad wanting to arrest the two-game skid. They lost their last game against Bacol at Bingo Plus. Meanwhile, Kalokan, they're looking to arrest a four-game losing streak. If the first half was a precursor to today's second half, we're in for a good, slow game. And as we say that, a turnover from an offensive foul. That uh, was a moving screen against Jomar Santos who brings Jan Hamon to the deck. There's that moving roadblock by Jomar Santos trying to set Damien Lasco free for that shot. And you have to add uh, two rolls on the floor for good measure <laughs> after a hit like that. The Strikers now will take possession and they'll try to get the first points of the second half. Ramirez drops it off. Reyes loses it. Excellence now on the counter. Cervantes passes up on the three. 
Goes between his legs, the spin, one-hander. Doesn't work. Oh, a referee calling a jump ball. Nobody having clear possession of the leather. And possession points to the side of the strikers. Again, good interior defense on both ends. Tough defense being played by both teams. No easy baskets right now. Montuana now working against Santos. Acuna swings it to Hamon. Reyes rolls back out. Montuano doesn't get the bounce. Inigo leaves it for Lasco. The lefty will finish. Good, strong finish through contact. Kept his composure after the hit to finish with the left hand. Let's look at that again. Lasco challenges the defense of Mark Montuano, getting the hoop and the harm. Damon Lasco, five points now in this game, going for six with this free throw. Gets it to go. Let's turn you over to Sydney Crespo for her first report of the second half. For the Bacoor strikers to be successful in this ball game, they will need patience on things they cannot control and focus on what they can do. Inside the Bacoor's dugout at the half, Coach Willie emphasized on sharing the ball and finding the next best shot. He gives this specific instruction dahil sa kanyang number one rule tonight, which is trusting your teammates. Hindi pa nga ito gaano nakikita ni Coach Willie and for them, they can still take care of the ball more and in terms of effort, he says everybody must get their rebound. Back to you guys. Thank you for that report, Sid. And on that play, Definitely ball movement, very much evident for the strikers. They have 12 assists in this game. However, they could not score on that possession. Has a chance here. Ramirez finally gets one to go. Still kept his composure even though Cervantes had good defense on that. Well, again, going aggressive to the basket, drawing fouls. That was Damian Lasco. On the other end, Ramirez got his first two points of this game. Alasco starting to become aggressive here, looking for his shots. Good read on the floor, seeing that the defense wasn't ready. Ran the floor. Got the outlet pass and drew a foul for two free throws. This free throw by Alasco is brought to you by Extreme Appliances. Ang subukat kompletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. Only the fourth and fifth attempts for Kaloogan in this game from the free throw line. Lasco is perfect on that trip. Eight points now in a game. Defense has been tight here for both squads. Ramirez uses the Montuana screen, pulls up, same area, same result. Just a little miscommunication, but again, oh, sorry, miss there. On the other way here, Acuna picks up his dribble. Ball is with Ramirez. Four straight points in this quarter. Pass, Montuano, one fake, gets the roll. Cervantes overplayed on that pick. Tried to get back to rotate to his man, but unfortunately, was off timing. Left his man open. Inigo for three. Another one. Isa pang unang pana sa laro ni Atsi today. Three pointer number five for the excellence in this game. Tying Bakor for that total. Moralde, aggressive drive, and he gets fouled. Uh, caught some of the body on that attempt to block the shot. And he knows it. That's third personal against Real Cervantes. And Coach Toto Duhilio. Agad-agad. Binunod si Edwin Asoro from the bench. Cervantes leaves this match with 11 points and 9 rebounds. Have to take a little rest here to preserve his fouls. Moraldi sinks the first.
Ronaldo has five points in this game to go with four rebounds and an assist. Two for two by I Dave Moralde. Almost a steal there. Good defense on the pressure. James working against RJ. Martinez finds some daylight. Defense is right there for Bacor. Ambuña speeding into the lane. Ramirez pulls back, attacks, trains the jumper. Six points in the game now. Feeling himself after getting a couple of baskets from that spot. Ramirez attacking the defense of Edwin Asoro, stopping on a dime and draining that short jumper that triggers a timeout. Galing dito sa Caloacan Excellence, 47 to 43. First game, Pasig City escaping with a victory over Makati City Manila Kingpin who extends their losing skit to now 15 games while the squad of Coach Ogi Gumata extends their winning run to 6 games. Valenzuela winning a big game over the Laguna Cra Asia Heroes, cementing their spot at the number 6 position in the North Division team standings. Right now, it's Kalookan and Bacoor trying to gut out a victory to arrest their respective losing skates. Lasco off a timeout, finishing on the other end. Uh, credit to the offense of Kalokan, running that play really quick, but the defense of Bacor was nowhere to be found on that play. Ramirez bounces it off Moralde. Dave finds an opening and is fouled. A good aggressive attack by Dave. Just got tripped up. Almost an end one opportunity. Moralde was perfect on his last trip. Has six points in this game. Makes the first. Only averaging 5.2 points per game. Almost two rebounds and an assist this season together with Jan Hamon and Ian Milencio joined the Bacor City Strikers midway through this season and has given them a lot of depth especially at that two guard spot Lasco pass intended for Inigo goes to Acuna Acuna drops it off Ramirez will score Eight points in the game for Ramirez. Sloppy offense there by Kalohan, forcing to that turnover. And an easy two points on the other end for Bacor. Inigo emergency pass. Santos, few feet out. That won't work. The pitch. That's going to be a turnover against the strikers. A bit too excited there on that pass. Here's that play. Acuna anchoring the break. In Ramirez, just enough composure to get the two points. To put them up six in this game. Defense leading to offense for Bacor. The strikers were up by just two points at halftime. Santos trimming that six point advantage to four. Five points in the game for Jomar Santos. Good basic pick and roll, confident on his floater. Easy two points for him. Montuano trying to get it to Ramirez, but Laude is there to break up the pass. Inigo, Laude is open on the right flank. Doesn't see it. 
Santos. They finally get it to Laude. But Talaokan will turn it over. Couldn't control that ball. Laude underneath with the turnover. Is that play? Lasco to Santos. Kisses it off the glass. You know, as much as you like to see fancy superstar plays, you also want to see basic basketball. For me, it's even prettier to watch when you see basic plays get executed to perfection. That's better th to me than crossovers and all these fancy finishes. And actually, you could also argue that those basic plays are already hard to come by in this day and age of the sport where it has been crowded with a lot of highlight one-on-one -on -one plays. Yes, and um, the youth should also learn how to appreciate the, these kinds of plays because, again, basketball is a game of thinking. If you can get tired but do not get tired and do more, that's what you want. And look what just a basic pick and roll can do. Easy two points for you. Ramirez from the left corner doesn't get one, that one to drop. Terzo checks back into the game. Moralde intercepts the pass. Oh! Just short on that layup. Ramirez asking for an alley-oop pass. Santos forces the issue, gets his own miss, and the score. Got to get Omar Santos. Seven points now in the game for Santos. Bakor actually allowing Kalokan to stay in this game with those miscues there. They have a chance to right their wrongs here. Moralde couldn't get that one to drop. Excellence. Can they continue their run? Laude from straight away. That is way off. And the strikers shot. will slow things down. Rush shot there by Laude. So early in the shot clock. Moralde gets the pick from Alon Alonso. No call. Chad gets the rebound. He's very surprised with that call. Oh! And he's complaining merits. Oh! An ejection! A referee! He has had enough of it. To the delight of the Bakor faithful, an ejection merited by Santos. Now being escorted off the playing court. This is big because Santos has scored a number of baskets for his team in this quarter to inch them closer to the strikers. Bakor was a was up by as much as six points and then Santos was able to spark a rally for his team well, let's see here on the replay that shot bothered by Doggy Laude and then there is the block here by Santos which he vehemently denied a little now, bit of contact underneath before the block. Santos saying, uh, I love you before uh, leaving the floor. Joman Santos out of the playing court. It has been verified and confirmed. Santos now ejected from this game. He leaves this match with seven points and four rebounds to his name. A number of those in this third period. He will be escorted off the floor by our security officials. There he is on your screens. And uh, <laughs> security head Rudy Distrito telling him that is enough. Trying to get a last word in, but the destroyer not having it. 
ko, ikaw ba naman, tayuan ka na ni Rudy Distrito sa harap mo? Di ka ba matatakot? Wala, nung sinabihan siya, di na tumingin Tiklop, sa referee, eh, no? wala na. <laughs> respect, respect. Technical free throw for Dave Moralde. Moralde will take the technical free throw here para sa Bacoor. Gets that one to trickle in. There's going to be another one on the way para dito kay Dave Moralde. You know, those kinds of possessions are learning experiences for players. And they need to learn how to control their temper. Not all foul calls will go their way, but knowing that Cervantes has three fouls and um, they're lacking height, he was going to be a big part of that, of the game remaining, but unfortunately, he let his emotions get the best of him. Now he has to hope that Kalo can, can sustain the momentum while he's back there in the locker room. There should be another technical free throw here. That was two technical fouls called. So our referee now verifying here with our technical committee. Again, thankless jobs these referees have. Oh, yeah. Especially when the team owners get involved telling them to look at the replays and... It's hard to keep your cool. Alonso misses on the first of two tries. Not quite sure yet why Moralde wasn't given another free throw. This is these are the two shots on the foul called on Jomar Santos. Oh, I think he's assuming he has one more. Ah, ito na yun, ito na yun. So, Moralde shot a free throw on the first technical. And then, Chad Alonzo shot two free throws on the personal foul by Jomar Santos. Now, this is the free throw, the technical free throw on the disqualifying, disqualifying foul. And Mark Montuano sinks that one. Uh, two free throws. Oh, my bad. Let me clarify that. The disqualifying foul is an unsportsman like foul. Oh, okay, okay. So, five free throws in one possession para dito sa Bacor City Strikers. The first one was a technical free throw, the second and third. were on the personal foul and there looks to be another technical foul here called against Kalooka and this is going to be on Joggy Laude I believe uh, usually if I'm not mistaken if it was something like that that would have been a warning first for it I don't think uh, Kalookan has a delay of game warning as of the moment that's right very surprising call here Usually they would deem that first as a warning. And Montuano sinks the technical free throw. And so just like that, the lead is back up to six points. Kalawakan already came close to two. A long lull in the game because of those free throws. Pangalinan extricates himself from the defense. Puts the ball on the deck. Alonso. That's going to be a 24-second shot clock violation against the strikers. At least Kalokan was able to get a stop on this possession. After that, for sure, dreadful free throw exhibition put on by Bacoor on the side of Kalokan. They're just happy to get a stop and finally get a chance to score. Kalokan has last call, Laude Octubre, Asoro, and Joseph Terzo. Lasco doesn't use the pick, pulls up, jumper, doesn't get the bounce. Possession will go the way of Bacor. I uh, wonder what the free throw disparity is right now. How many free throws has Bacor attempted? 16 out of 23 for the strikers, while Kalokan only 4 out of 5 from the line. 
five free throws for Caloca this whole game. Bangalina off the screen. Three pointer doesn't work. As we head into the final two minutes of the third quarter, Asoro couldn't get it to Octubre down low. Laude from the left flank, way off. Acuna decides to pull it back. 14 on the shot clock. Indecision almost led to a turnover. Pangilinan for three. That's going to be a foul against Acuna. Good defense there by Caloca, not giving up on that scramble. Almost forced the turnover, but played good defense enough to secure the defensive rebound. And Martinez checks into the game. Neiman Lasca will have a spell on the bench. There's a now quarterbacking for Caloocan. Asoro thinking three. Puts the ball on the floor. The spin could not get the shot to go. Stop here for Bacor. Alonso. In trouble here. That's an offensive foul. A good pressure defense by Laude. Giving, literally giving up his body for that turnover. Pressure defense right there, forcing him to, forcing Alonso to stick out his elbows. Very clear, clear there. Yes. In our officials here reviewing for an unsportsmanlike foul, Laude ngayon lang siya tumayo. Looks like he was hit good on the chin area. Chin bow up, actually. Oh, yeah. Chin, yeah. chin. And there you go. Unsportsmanlike foul will be called against Chad Alonso. Let's look at that again. There you see the first hit. And this is the second. Natalagan tinamaan na talaga sa panga. Ito si Jogi Laude. And you love that home court not agreeing, supporting their team in any way they can. And like we predicted, a slow grind out second half, just like the first half. The trend continues. Laude will go to the line for only the sixth and seventh attempts of this game. Para dito sa kanyang kupunan. Could it take care of the first? Jogi Laud is still scoreless in this game. Averaging 6.1 points this season. To go with three rebounds and two assists. And he gets the bounce. 60% from the line this season. It's si Jogi Laude. Mark Manalang makes his first appearance in this game. Para kay Coach Toto Duhilio. Three point guard setup here. Para sa excellence. We also have Martinez, Terraso, Asoro in October on the floor. October tries to get away from the defense. And another foul here called on Chad Alonso. Just like that, penalty na dito ang Bacoor City. Octubre can't take care of the first. At nine points, ito si Rafi Octubre at six rebounds. Only one point in the second half with si Rafi Octubre. Oh, pardon me. Nine points all in the first half. So still scoreless in the second half. 
finally gets one to go. Breaking double figures itong si Rafi Octubre. Four point lead by Bacor. 50 seconds remaining in a very physical third quarter. Acuna gets it to Reyes. Lester, one hander, that's short. Martinez goes into the lane. Oh, that's going to be a dribbling violation against James Martinez. Well, Try to elude his defender by hanging the ball. Referee saw otherwise. Let's see it here. Yes, quite clear on that replay. A little bit of extra hang there. From the initial eye test, it looked to have been a good, uh, a good dribble. Dribble. Ramirez now working with Lester Reyes. Acuna pops out, fakes the three, passes to Montuano, and Montuano gets the score. Specialty of the house again, that perimeter shot. Just drive it and leave it in for him for that easy two-point shot. Two seconds remaining. Octubre for three. Yes, sir! Oh, sigh of relief from Octubre finally getting something going their way. And our officials will check if that shot will be counted. Let's look at that again. Here's the drive by Joseph Terzo. Yes, very clear on that replay. And our referee is already counting that shot. I think uh, we'll have to clarify whether it was a three-pointer or not. Laman natin yan in just a few. Fourth and final quarter coming your way in just a bit. Back here inside the Strike Dimnasium in Bacoor City. Of course, we'd like to greet uh, an advance happy birthday to former Senator Bong Revilla, who is celebrating his birthday on September 25. Of course, the reveal is very prominent here in the province of Cavite. Good sized crowd we have here at the Strike Gymnasium. Lots of beautiful faces. And here, our officials dito sa MPBL, Captain Marbel Commissioner Kenneth Turemdes, Head of Operations, Emer Oreta, and the Destroyer, Rudy Distrito, our Head of Security. You also saw on your screens momentarily broadcast head, Sedelf Tupas. Martinez starts festivities off in the fourth quarter with a two-pointer quarter scoring on your screens there. Slow third quarter we had, but Bacor still able to get the upper hand 20 to 18. First half was First quarter was first quarter and second quarter were back and forth. And then the third quarter was a very slow grind out quarter for Bacor. And now Kalookan looking to go 5 0 with the run, but missed on that. Octubre with the offensive rebound, though. Manalang cuts, changes hands in midair. Defense just right there to bother the shot. Elencho is back into the game, as well as Jan Hamon. And JR got it. Come on, working on Martinez. The up, under, and down. Para kay Jan Hamol. Oh, that shot wanted to be a little more dramatic a few seconds before falling in, but good move nonetheless by Hamon. And we bring you this epic move of the game in partnership 
with OK Bet on the win. And John Hamon definitely owning James Martinez on that play. Up and under, jumped on the fake. Friendly roll in for a chance for an end one play. Well, Hamon has been struggling in this game. Opened this match with two straight misses from three point country. Both were wide open. And he really had to bleed for his baskets since then. Two out of six from the field in this game. Itong si John Hamon out of the Emilio Aguinaldo College program. 60 to 55 is our count here. Almost two minutes into this final frame. Martinez gets away. Couldn't get it to Asoro. Melencho bounces it off. Got it. Oh! Foul there by Cervantes. And that's going to be number four on rail. No, couldn't. Couldn't hold back. Sometimes your instincts just really try to get you to steal that ball. But unfortunately, off the turnover, got his hand in the cookie jar right there. Saktong sakto, puro kamay yung nakuha niya. Uh, may referee pa sa harap. Oh. Walang takas talaga. CR Galit. Three points now in the game. Got the start in this game for Coach Willie Hinalalao. Averaging almost six points per game. 3.3 rebounds and one assist. And this free throw is brought to you by Extreme Appliances. Ang sabuk at kompletong appliance brand ng Pilipinas. Split at the line para kay JR Galit. And battle for possession will go the way of the Caloacan Excellence. Teresa will move out of the game in favor of Damon Lasco. He joins Manalang, Asoro, and Cervantes para kay Coach Toto Dihilio. Manalang trying to stake his way through and gets that one off the glass. First two points in the game. Close game so far we're having. No one letting up at this point. Hamon gets the handoff. That's a foul against the Soro. A little too aggressive on the denial. Two early fouls for Kalohokan. With still eight minutes left in the game. Oh, I'm sorry. Three fouls for Kalohokan. With eight minutes left in the game. Melencio working against Manala. Picks up his dribble. Tips a shot. All net para kay Ian Melencio. And got it. Gets the steal here. The strikers decide to set it up. There's that handle we were talking about. Melencio, can he go back to back? That's off to the left. Offensive rebound para kay Montuado. That could have been big for Bacor. A momentum shifter there. Oh, a late whistle against Kalookan after that shot. Here's that spin in the bump after the shot by Damien Lasco. But ito yung tira dito kanina. Nian Milencio stopping on a dime. Little fake there to elude the defense and nothing but the bottom of the net on the jumper. Bakor clearly more aggressive in this game attacking the basket. Aside from the penalties we had a while ago for those technicals, more opportunities at the line because of their aggressiveness in drawing the fouls from Kalohokan. Manalang gets the board. And that's uh, actually somewhat of an irony because Kaloka leads points in the paint 28 to 20, but uh, the strikers do have more free throw attempts in this game. Let's turn you over to Sidney Crespo. 
I mentioned at the top of our broadcast that Jomar Santos has to fill in the gap for Coach Ronnie's squad. And so this ejection could really hurt them, especially in these crucial moments. Now, according to assistant coach Carla Nuza, the Caloacan excellence will have to embody their next play mentality and fight for every possession. Your thoughts on this, guys? Thank you for that, Sid. And that's exactly what they have to do here. A lot of calls not going their way. Talking about the Caloacan excellence. Uh, they're still very much in this, especially after that three-pointer by Real Cervantes. Even though there's a big disparity on free throws, Caloacan only down three with still six minutes and 55 left in this ball game. Come on. Could have get that one to drop, but there's going to be a foul on the loose ball. That's going to go against Mark Manalang. He is in this belief as well. Well, that's that aggressiveness again towards the basket. Uh, no matter what, shooting foul or not, they're already in the penalty. So giving up another two free throws is Kalohokan. Well, we had a dragging third quarter. We're very sure to be in for another long period here as the excellence already in the penalty with six minutes and 48 remaining in this game. And a warning once again called on the Kalok and Excellence bench for unsportsmanlike behavior. The first in this game. Laban sa bench ng Kalookan. But there were a lot of warnings already given to various players because of the high physicality that this game has had from both teams. Montuano takes care of the first. How many percent is uh, Bakor from the free throw line? 64%. 18 out of 28. Oh, that's big. 18 points from the free throw. Maybe 19? 18 points. And only a four-point lead for Bakor. So, Kalok and doing well to keep in step. Just down by four. And to remind everybody, Kalok is already missing the services of Jomar Santos who had 7 points and 4 rebounds in this game before he exited this match due to a disqualifying foul in the third quarter. Cervantes tries to go back to back and yes he does! Oh that that's that veteran touch right there very confident in his shot shot clock winding down hand in his face, let it fly Bakor just up 1 after that 3 you could tell in his eyes that he really wants this W. Oh, RJ Ramirez. Offensive foul. That's great defense by Mark Manalang. Oh, Mark Manalang just ahead of ahead of Ramirez on the spot. Throwing that offensive foul. Meanwhile, Coach Willie Inarallao will take this opportunity to burn a ceasefire as his team down by just a singular point right now. With 5.55 remaining in this game. Crowd here at the Strike Gymnasium in Bacoor City. A very supportive, very energetic crowd at our hands trying to support their home squad. Joe Ramos on your screens, MBBL Executive Officer. Always in attendance to supervise our games. Of course, one of the hardworking men and women sa ating Liga ng Bawat Pilipino. There's Captain Marbel, Commissioner Kenneth Duremdes. One of the PBA's 25 greatest players. Emer Oreta, head of basketball operations on his left and on his right is security head, the destroyer, Rudy Distrito. Oh, good effort there on the inbound. 
trying to disrupt it, almost forcing a five-second violation. But Kalokan managing to dodge a bullet there. Manalang will bring it up para dito sa Kalokan. Working against Ian Malencio. Trying to get it to Cervantes, and they finally do. This matchup against Montuano has been premier. But he loses it. Moralde gets it to Mark. Back to Dave. Pulls back. Almost a turnover. Bahor will set. Reyes provides the roadblock. Montuano, familiar jumper, doesn't work. Asoro ahead of the pack and he scores. Kaloka now with the lead. Defense turning to offense, playing good defense on that set. Asoro leaking out and the smaller Melesio trying to get that. But unfortunately for them, size one on that possession. Oh, and an offensive foul called on the screen here. Laban kay Lester Reyes. And now fouls picking up for Bacor right now. Not the best timing. It is right here. Not quite sure on that call. But he was moving. He was definitely moving. There's that two-pointer by Asoro. Great forward pass by Damien Lasco. And here they are, the excellence. Now in the driver's seat. And they look to pad onto that advantage further. Manalang draws a foul on the drive. Good read there on offense. His defender wasn't sure if they were going to pass it out to Real. A bit late on the recovery. No choice but the foul. Not fully established was Eric Acuna. Was caught standing on that play before he went down low to challenge that drive by Peter Manalang. And Manalang has only played over six minutes in this game, but he has provided quality minutes for Coach Toto Duhilo. Could it take care of the first free throw, though? Uh, let's see if he can capitalize on this one to give him at least a two-point advantage. Gets the second. Two-point lead here for Kalookan. More than halfway through his final frame. Montuano flashes middle. Gets it back out to Moralde. Doesn't use the screen. Moralde, aggressive drive and finish. Good decision by Moralde to attack the basket for his 11th point. Knowing that Kalogan was in the penalty, it was either a foul or an easy bucket. Good decision there by Moralde. Lasco tries to get it back. That's going to be a foul on the loose ball against the Soro. Penalty situation for Kalokan. Lester Reyes will troop to the line here for two shots. Already the 31st and 32nd attempts from the free throws type para dito sa Bacoor. While Kalokan only 7 out of 11 from that area. Reyes switches the first. Kalokan hoping they can keep in step even despite the free throw disparity. Kalokan still doing their best to stay in this game. Only down by a solitary point. Split at the line for Lester Reyes. 42.9% from the charity stripe this season. Manalang, they're trying to locate Cervantes on that block. Working against Montuano again. Trying to pivot his way out of trouble. Two seconds left on the shot block. Martinez, the heave at the score! Oh, big shot. Big shot by James Martinez to give them a two-point lead. That's the best defense you can play, but unfortunately, better offense. 
Only the second three-pointer of the game para dito kay James Martinez. Manalang leading the break. He will score. Oh, Moralde knowing that he caused that turnover. Nowhere to pass to. Now, Calocan up four. Leading the Bacor Strikers. Shot clock winding down. Cervantes had to give it up. And Martinez had to heave it from way out. And here's the steal completed by Caloocan. Manalang leads the break. He had Martinez on the right, decides to take it for himself and finishes 5-0 run for the Caloocan Excellence to give themselves a four-point lead heading into this timeout. the games happening at Nueva Ecija Coliseum in Palayan City we have Marikina going up against Mindoro at 5 o'clock in our second offering it's going to be the Rizal Centrum All Golden Coolers going up against the Imo City Bandera and in our main event the battle of North Division powerhouses the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards taking their unbeaten record against the number 2 Pampanga Giant Lanterns exciting games awaiting UMPBL fans tomorrow pero sa ngayon sunghayan muna natin sino ang mananalo dito Kaloocan and Bacoor trying to cut out a victory both teams trying to arrest their losing skits off a timeout Reyes couldn't get that one to drop oh, sorry miss there for Reyes had the open lane just couldn't convert Asoro trying to get it to Martinez. James working against Moralde. He's blitzed. They swing. Cervantes 4 3. Shot is long. Reyes colors the board. Ramirez sends it back to Acuna. Eric hands it off to Moralde. Gets it back. Baseline drive. Kick out. Ramirez 4 3. That's good. Big shot after big shot by both teams. 11 points down in the game for Ramirez. Calocan still holding a one-point lead. A foul given up there by Bacoor. Both teams now in the penalty. Fourth personal laban dito kay Eric Acuna. Uh, let's look at this previous offensive set para sa strikers, RJ Ramirez. Catch, set, fire, splash. Only his first three-pointer of this game after two attempts from downtown. Willing his team back to just one point behind the Caloacan excellence right now. A little lull in the action here. Not really sure what happened. But uh, I'm certain that Bacor now already above the limit with 2 minutes and 23 seconds remaining in this game Kalaokan crossed that line during the 6 minute mark of this 4th quarter and free throws have really been big on the side of the strikers let's see what happened on the previous play a trip by Acuna And I believe an unsportsmanlike foul called. Laban dito kay Eric Acuna. So two free throws plus ball possession. I'm sorry. Was the foul against Achi? No, the foul was against uh, Eric Acuna on Achi. On Peter Manalang. But uh, I think Manalang had to be subbed out of the game. So Inigo was the one who took the free throw. So no one sportsman like Falco, just an ordinary personal against Eric Agunya. Oh, well, let's see if Bacor can have a good offensive set here. Hamon, short on that layup. Last touch against the strikers. Oh, no communication there. Two Bacor strikers went for the rebound. Unfortunately, couldn't secure it. Let's see it right here. 
No call, and it was Ramirez and Alonso trying to go for that board. However, it will not go their way. And the excellence with the chance to pad on to this three-point advantage as we head into the final two minutes of this game. Terzo hands it off to Martinez. Offensive foul on the handoff. Laban by Joseph Terzo. Fouls on fouls, offensive fouls. Now they're asking for reviews, but I don't really know if that's reviewable. A foul definitely not reviewable in FIBA rules. Once a foul is called on the floor, it will hold. The only thing that you can review are possessions on the outside. Kaloakan demanding a review on that play. But I don't think they'll get it. And definitely that foul will not go the other way. Uh, I don't know when when that has been allowed. Uh, asking for replays for flops. Usually on dead ball situations. But warnings are given first. Oh, good defense there. Ramirez almost losing possession of the basketball. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Baseline inbound para dito sa strikers. Ramirez has Alonso, Acuna, Montuano, and Hamon on the floor with him. Hamon drives inside and was fouled on the attempt. Reach in foul there by Aji. The driving Hamon. See it right here. Just a little reach there in the last minute. Good call right there by our officials. Meron nang ang contact dun sa unang hampas. Yes. Kung baga, hindi na nahuli yung una, pero yung pangalawa. But then, you know what they say. Ball don't lie. But it's yet to be told on the second one. <laughs> Maybe half truth, half lie. <laughs> For sure, Achi will let them know if he misses this second one. Well, a split at the line for John Hamon. Half through tough life. Half through tough life. Tight ball game at our hands. Sure to be a down the wire finish here. There's a pinatabina si Nigo. Cervantes at the post again against Montuano. Tap from behind. Ramirez ends up with a steal. Gets the step on Martinez and he will finish. Tying this game at 73 all. 13th point for Ramirez. And the home crowd going crazy over that defensive effort right there. Single coverage on the post. Turnover leading to an easy fast break layup. So good, you have to see it twice. Ramirez, the former FU Tamarau, gliding into the air to tie this ball game up as Coach Toto Dujillo calls a ceasefire here. One minute and 16 remaining. Once again, games happen tomorrow at the Nueva Ecija Coliseum in Palayan City, Marikina, going up against the Mindoro Tams at 5 o'clock. At 7, it's going to be the Imo City Bandera and the Rizal Centrum All Golden Coolers squaring off. And in our main game, the battle of two North Division powerhouses, the number one Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards going up against the number two upstart Pampanga Giant Lanterns. Well, right now, I'm sure a good three games late. Looking forward to that, but right now we have a really, really good game on our hands this Thursday evening. Inigo gets the inbound. Cervantes offers the screen. Inigo, the floater, gets the bounce. Good decision there on Inigo. That's the beauty of having a roller who can shoot. 
you force the defense to make a decision and Inigo making the right decision, driving into the lane for two. Only the seventh point of the game for Rachi Inigo. Ramirez hangs in the air and gets the roll. Big shot after big shot from both teams. Don't look now, we have a tied ball game with 40 seconds left. 75 apiece here. Inigo met by two defenders. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Crossover, spin, dribble, layup, doesn't work. Alonso secures the board. Let's see who's gonna take this big shot. Two second differential, shot clock and game clock. Home crowd being delighted to a very, very good game with the home team with a chance to take the victory on this possession. Ramirez gets the screen from Montuano. RJ for the game. Short, Amon, does it go, Alonso. That I believe will not count as the clock read zero even before the leather left the hands of Chad Alonso. I agree, I agree, it looked like it didn't count. No. Here's that previous play. Ramirez missed on the jumper. Hamon couldn't get the put back to go. And just as Alonso got the rebound, clock already expiring. And 40 minutes was not enough as we need an extra five to decide the outcome of this game. We'll be back for overtime. Back here inside the strike gymnasium in Bacoor City. 40 minutes, not enough to decide the outcome of this match between the Bacoor City Strikers and the Caloocan City Excellence. An extra five minutes now needed to decide the winner of this ball game. RJ Ramirez failing to connect on what could have been the game winner. Jan Hamon missed on the putback and Chad Alonso did not have time to put back that shot. Time already expiring. Para dito sa Bacoor Strikers. Colocan Excellence fighting tooth and nail to try and steal this victory from under the rug. Now overtime just about underway here. Javi Palanya together with Coach Aldo Panlilio on call for you today. We have Sidney Crespo at courtside joined by Sam Coloso. Aldo, this game has been up and down all game long. A game of runs from both teams. Defense and offense talagang kulabanan talaga eh. And these are the times where you, even those one basket free throws you regret missing. Literally a game of all baskets counting with Hamon. With that beautiful move. Oh, letting him know. Letting him know. He breaks it to double digits with that shot. Ten points in the game para kay Jan Hamon. Ramirez with a swipe. One man to beat. Ramirez cannot finish. That ball off of Eric Acuna. Ramirez looking for that contact, but Azoro smart enough to go away. Leading into that rebound and possession change. Eight deadlocks and 18 lead changes in this game. This is a, a game in every sense of the word. Lasco spinning into the lane. 
draws a foul against Chad Alonso, which I believe is foul number five. Oh, my bad. Only the fourth against Chad Alonso, so he will still stay in this game. Lasco will troop to the line for two free throws. Only the 14th and 15th attempt of this game para sa Kaloocan. While Bacoor has 34 attempts from the charity stripe in this game. And yet, this game is in overtime despite that disparity. Lasco takes care of both free throws. Look for Kaloocan to be more aggressive and drawing fouls and Bakor just to stick to their place looking for the open man Ramirez surveying his options Hamon wants it at the post against Lasco Hamon works his way in for a deuce oh letting him know again I'm eating I'm eating he is very much tied with si Jan Hamon Lasco loses his defender with a crossover, hangs in the air, and lets out that sign. Oh my gosh. Showmanship between two very physical players right now. Chad Alonso is down. Let's look at that play. Hamon against Lasco. There you go. Two sandwiches, sir. But and beat on that crossover. <laughs> one sandwich lang daw. Kaya kaya na. Oh, one sandwich lang. One sandwich lang. Boy. Nagkakainan sila. Happy. <laughs> Mukhang may sandwich eating contest tayo dito. <laughs> Nagugutom na tuloy ako dito. Oh, what a way. This game is coming to a close. Both teams refusing to give an inch. Coach Willian Aralao and his squad trying to arrest a two-game losing streak. Chad Alonso still walking gingerly off the floor. Hit with a knee, I think, uh, yeah. on that aerial attack on him a while ago. Now a tie ball game once again at her hand, 79 apiece. Four points each in this overtime period para sa parehong kupunan. Oh, Hamon trying to get the ball. Looking for it. Finally gets it. Good switch there. Oh, good defense by Lasco. Hamon though finds himself open. Ramirez offensive rebound and put back. Imagine the place would have went crazy if Hamon hit that three-pointer. Back in the driver's seat, the tongue strikers. Lasco being defended by RJ. Asoro passes up on the three, tries to leave it for Octubre. Another steal here by Bacor. Aaron passed there. He was open for a three, but decided otherwise. There's a right now, the one guarding Jan Hamon. Good defense all over that shot. Ramirez. Montuano will not force it. Acuna, left corner three, RJ Ramirez, short. Scramble for the loose ball, ends up with Jan Hamon. Oh, what a game we're having right now. Everyone being treated to a hard-fought physical game. Five seconds left. Hamon for three, in and out. Octubre, able to secure possession finally. No look pass at Sinigo. Octubre, what will he do? Cannot finish. Sorry, miss there by Octubre on the reverse. Just a little bit too much English. Good stop by Bacor. Still a lot of time in this ball game, though. Bacor, they like this matchup. Hamon, fall away. He's good. Chan Hamon, big shot after big shot after big shot. First, it was a sandwich eating contest. Now it's a how small are you contest? <laughs> the former Passe Voyager now strutting his wares for the Bacoor City Strikers. 
trying to lead his current squad to a victory to arrest their two-game losing streak. Janamon coming to play. 14 points in this game. You just love the showmanship. Always letting them know when you get one over them. Cervantes wants it against Montano. That's a foul against Mark Montuano. Veteran play there by Cervantes, forcing the issue inside. Unfortunately, getting the whistle call. Now he has to really make these two free throws to inch closer to Bacor. Substitutions here for Caloacan. Laude will check in in lieu of Damon Lasco for defensive purposes. Cervantes now at the line. Takes care of the first. Blows a kiss to the crowd as he hits that. Showmanship from both teams. You love to see it. First trip at the line of this game para kay Real Cervantes. A 45% free throw shooter this season. Couldn't get that one to drop, but a lane violation here. Double lane violation. Resulting in a jump ball, but possession points to the side of the excellence. They will retain possession here. The strikers leading by three points, 83 to 80. One minute and change remaining in overtime. With the way this game is looking, I feel like this possession will tie the ball game. Tingnan natin kung magtidilang ang hell si Coach Aldo Panlilio. October, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Does he know it? Laude. Four seconds remaining. Forced to take a three way off. Pulled off the bench. Laude. First possession in was forced into that shot. October not knowing there was only a few seconds left on the shot clock. No scorers on the floor para sa Caloacan. No Damien Lasco. No James Martinez. Only Real Cervantes. Capable offensive player. Rajonia, they swing it to Ramirez. Gets a screen from Lester Reyes. Ramirez, uh, long on the jumper. Leather ends up with Laude. Manalam will pull back. Manalang out to Inigo for three. Off to the right, Octubre gets the offensive rebound. 20, almost just 20 seconds left in the game. Let's see if they rec recognize the shot clock. Octubre puts the ball on the deck, short on the jumper. Manalang forces one up and gets the basket. No giving up in this Kalohokan team fighting for that offensive rebound. Drawing the game to just one point. A lot of drive and draw on that offensive set para sa Kalokan. But the offensive rebound and put back by Peter Manalang giving his team just a one point deficit. Look at that. Really fighting tooth and nail for that shot. He has been providing quality minutes in this game. Only checked in in the second half. Did not play in the first two quarters para kay Coach Toto Diohilio, but has seen a lot of action since. I don't mean to sound like a stereotype, but you know who the real winners are of this day? The fans! Bro. Oh yeah, definitely. The sulit fans. to sulit. All those watching on the MPBL Facebook page, on the MPBL YouTube channel, Treated to a game here, and all those watching live in lo on location from the Strike Gymnasium in Bacoor City. Kalokan with one more timeout left. So expect them to foul, call a timeout, and maybe, depending on this possession right here, win or tie the ball game with a stop.
Crucial possession right here for the strikers. Moralde will be joined by Melenzo, Hamon, Ramirez, and Montuano. Four guards on the floor here for Coach Willie Generalao. Hamon receives it. Calocan has the foul. And they finally do. Tried to go for the steal first before uh, giving up that foul. Calok and with one more timeout left. So let's see it here. Oh, could have been called for the traveling violation first. Hamon will be tested now at the line. Two free throws could bring his team to a three-point advantage. Hamon takes care of the first. Four out of six from the free throw line in this game. He has hit the crucial baskets for his squad. Especially in overtime, matching up against Damon Lasco. Can he get the better of him in this game? Two for two, perfect trip at the line. Three point lead for the strikers. Aldo Kalookan has not had James Martinez nor Damon Lasco on the floor in the past two or three possessions. Well, right now, as you say that, Martinez telling the bench, telling the committee that he's coming in. Maybe save the best for for last right now. Look for James to get the possession on this offensive set. And hopefully for Kalok and force the game into overtime. Double overtime. And the crowd is very ecstatic, energetic. They are just loving the action. Lots of uh, butterflies tonight in the building. Literally and figuratively, must yes, I say. Yes. And butterflies in the stomachs of these fans as well. <laughs> everyone, almost everyone standing, seeing if their home team can get this defensive stop. Montuano and Le Reyes inserted back into the game for defensive purposes. Meanwhile, Kalookan will have this final 6.6 .6 seconds with Octubre, Lasco, Cervantes, Inigo, and James Martinez. Lasco is the designated inbounder. Let's see if they can follow their coach's draw up in the sideline out of bounds play. Let's see what they have. Box formation here. Lasco trying to locate Martinez. Cervantes ends up with it. James from way out. Short. And that's it. Bacoor City will run away with the victory. Good game for both teams. The home crowd was treated to a really, really good game. Boy, what a matchup this was. Kalookan winning the first quarter. Bacoor outscoring the excellence by eight in the second period. Bacoor getting the better of that matchup in the third, 20-18. Here's that previous play by James Martinez. Cervantes was double team. And with three seconds remaining on the game clock and some change, Martinez threw it up from way out. Couldn't get that one to go to send this game into a second overtime. Kalookan, despite winning the fourth quarter, couldn't finish the game. And the strikers outscoring the excellence by three in extra period. Jan Hamon is our player of the game. This is brought to you by OKBet, the official partner of the FBBL with OKBet on the win. 16 points, 5 out of 15 from the field, 2 rebounds. 8 points in overtime for Jan Hamon. Half of his points in the crucial overtime period. And we could say that pushed Bacoor to the 3-point win.
Let's turn you over to Sydney Crespo, who is with our player of the game, John Hamon. Sulit na sulit ang pagpunta ng mga taga Bacoor dito sa MPBL with all the action that they saw and ultimately their home team snatching the W tonight. And their best player of the game is Jan Hamon with 16 big points and delivering all the energy, especially sa overtime. Jan, alam kong sobrang importante sa'yo ng panalong ito. But tell us more about the importance of that at anong nararamdaman mo ngayon. Uh, yun nga po. Uh... Unang-una po, uh, take ko lang itong opportunity na to para magpasalamat po sa lahat ng sumusuporta sa amin. Uh, si Mayor Strike Revilla, si Ma'am Shay Revilla, uh, si Boss Dennis Abelia, si Ma'am Liza, si Ma'am Vice Karen Evaristo, tsaka yung husband niya. Yung lahat ng mga tiga Bacoor, mga tiga Dasma, eh, pumunta po po yung tropa ko sa Dasma family ko. Friends, yung mga family ko, yung mga tropa, uh, yun nga po, napaka-importante pong panalo sa amin to kasi yun nga, palapit na po sa playoffs. Uh, nagpasalamat lang ako kasi binigyan ako ng chance nila coach na ano uh, ipakita yung ano ko support sa overtime binigyan nila ako ng chance na maglaro maraming salamat kila coach sa coaching staff namin sa mga teammates ko uh, yun po maraming salamat po sa mga taga Bacoor Pike Cure uh, at tayo Oxidant po uh, si boss ano boss Richard Gomez si boss Dennis Ma'am Liza uh, tsaka si shout out po si Cap Mike Sakitan si Kagawad Arsyaga si boss ano Cap BJ Big Mac Sisig, uh, basta lahat ng mga sumusuporta sa amin. Mayor, thank you po sa inyo, uh, Ma'am Shay. Mga Horus Writers, thank you po. Mama, Papa ko, family ko, uh, si Mama Mayu, uh, mga anak ko, si Brian, si Tatum, si Erin, si Elise, asawa ko, si Erisa, yung family ko, ayun yung Tropa Tasma. Thank you. Alam nyo, parang championship na dito sa sidelines. Again, that's our best player of the game, Jan Hamon, brought to you by OKBet, OK the official partner of the MPBL. With OKBet, OK own the win. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Sid. Once again, congratulations to our player of the game, Jan Hamon, and the rest of the Bacoor City Strikers. Games tomorrow happening at Palayan City, the Nueva Ecija Coliseum, Marikina Shoe Masters, going up against the Mindoro Tams at 5. At 7 p.m., it's going to be the result. Central Mall Golden Coolers going up against the Imo City Bandera. And on our main offering, it's going to be the Nueva Ecija Rice Vanguards taking their unbeaten run against the number two team in the Northern Division, the Pampanga Giant Lanterns. For my partner, Coach Aldo Panlilio, for City Crespo and Sam Coloso, this has been Javi Palanya saying good night from Bacoor City. This has been the Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League, Ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino.